Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com. My home state of New Mexico believes in science. Two years ago today, Scientific American bragged how New Mexico had controlled the spread of COVID-19 using science-based targets. That article was published immediately before cases of COVID-19 in New Mexico skyrocketed by a factor of more than 10. New Mexico politicians not only believe they can control viruses, but they also believe they can control bad weather and climate. The New Mexico governor believes that Joe Biden recently signed a law controlling the climate. This must be good news because the press says that New Mexico is having the worst drought in at least 1,200 years. They also say that the Rio Grande River has run dry in Albuquerque because of the burning of fossil fuels. NASA picked up on this story and showed this image of how the Rio Grande River had run dry from this point to this point and then magically reappeared right here. Let's take a closer look at that on Google Earth. This is the section of river which Scientific American said ran dry. At the north end of that section is two tunnels which divert the water out of the river channel into an irrigation canal. And at the south end of that section is a tunnel which diverts the water back from the irrigation canal into the river channel. If we look at the stream flow graph for the Rio Grande River in Albuquerque, we can see that there was a very sharp dip in July. On July 25th, there was only 20.8 cubic feet per second of water flowing in the main river channel. But 50 miles to the north, there was 20 times as much water in the Rio Grande River as there was in Albuquerque. One week later, there was more than 50 times as much water in the Rio Grande River. The river didn't actually run dry. The water was just diverted out of the main channel into an irrigation canal. According to experts, apparently irrigation canals are caused by climate change. For much of the summer, the Rio Grande River around Albuquerque has actually been running at record high levels. This is due to record high amounts of rainfall which have occurred over the last three months. Some parts of New Mexico have received more than 20 inches of rain since June 15th. And over the next week, some parts of New Mexico are forecast to get more than 4 inches of rain. Albuquerque is forecast to get more than 2 inches of rain. Many rivers in the southwest U.S. are running at record high levels right now. The Little Colorado River in Arizona has phenomenal amounts of water for this time of year, 1,210 cubic feet per second. Let's take a look at how easy it is to misinterpret stream flow data. The Chama River near the confluence with the Rio Grande is running much below normal for this day of year at 112 cubic feet per second. About 25 miles to the northwest, the Chama River is running much below normal at 121 cubic feet per second. That measurement was taken just below the dam at Abiquiu Reservoir. But at the other end of the reservoir, there's almost five times as much water, which is normal stream flow for this day of year. It's pretty clear why there's low water levels on this part of the Chama River. It's because they're using the water to fill up Apache Reservoir. This sort of abusive data allows the press to create disinformation about climate and fossil fuels. They claim that climate change is making the Rio Grande and Rhine rivers run dry. Both claims are made based on gross misinformation. The Rhine River actually has run dry in the past several times though, including 1132, 1303, and 1304, when the Rhine, Loire, and Seine all ran dry. Let's go back to Abiquiu Reservoir, which interests me because I grew up near there. Georgia O'Keeffe lived in Abiquiu and she made this very famous painting in 1941. The flat-topped mountain is named Paternal Peak. And this is a movie scene filmed near Paternal Peak in 1984. The movie was Red Dawn about a communist invasion of the southwestern United States. The people on horseback were the Wolverines, high school students defending the country against communists. You can see that they're riding towards Abiquiu Reservoir. As they're crossing the road, they come across a box of food which fell out of a Russian vehicle. Food is typically in short supply in communist societies. My first wife grew up in the Soviet Union and typically spent three or four hours a day queuing up for a few scraps of meat. But the food was just a trap for the Wolverines. Russian helicopters then came and attacked them. 
The movie was very dramatic, but that's not at all how the communist takeover has been occurring. It was done much more subtly, as explained by Soviet defector Yuri Bezmenov in the same year the movie came out, 1984. The takeover is occurring via the use of propaganda and ideological subversion. The rest of this video is Yuri Bezmenov speaking about how this ideological subversion is being done. Well, you spoke several times before about ideological subversion. That is a phrase that uh, I'm afraid some Americans don't fully understand. When uh, the Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion, what do they mean by it? Ideological subversion is, is the process which is legitimate, overt, and open. You, you can see it with your own eyes. All, all you have to do, all American mass media has to do, is to unplug their bananas from their ears, open up their eyes, and they can see it. There is no mystery. There is nothing to do with espionage. I know that espionage intelligence gathering looks more romantic. It sells more deodorants through the advertising, probably. That's why your Hollywood producers are so crazy about James Bond type uh, of, of thrillers. But in reality, the main emphasis of the KGB is not in the area of it intelligence at all. According to my uh, opinion and opinion of many defectors of my caliber, only about 15% of time, money, and manpower is spent on espionage as such. The other 85% is a slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, activne meropriatia in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interests of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The result? The result you can see, most of the people who graduated in the 60s, dropouts or half-baked intellectuals, are now occupying the positions of power in the government, civil service, business, mass media, educational system. You are stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. They are contaminated. They are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. You cannot change their mind, even if you... If you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. In other words, these people, uh, uh, the process of demoralization is complete and irreversible. To get rid of society of these people, you, have, you need another 20 or, or, or 15 years to educate a new generation of patriotically minded and, and, and uh, common, common sense people who would be acting in favor and in the interests of, of the uh, of, uh, United States society. And yet these people who've been programmed and, as you say, in place and yes. who are favorable to an opening with the Soviet concept, mm -hmm. these are the very people who would be marked for extermination in this country? Most of them, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, simply because the psychological shock when, when they will see in future what the, what the beautiful society of equality and social justice means in practice, obviously they will revolt. They, 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 will, uh, they, they will be very unhappy, frustrated people. And the Marxist-Leninist regime does not tolerate these people. Uh, they, obviously they will join the links of dissenters, mm -hmm. dissidents. Uh, unlike in present United States, there will be no place for dissent in, in future Marxist-Leninist America. Uh, here you can, you can get uh, popular like uh, Daniel Ellsberg and filthy rich like Jane Fonda 
for being dissident, for criticizing your Pentagon. In future, these people will be simply squashed like cockroaches. Nobody is going to pay them nothing for their beautiful, noble ideas of equality. This they don't understand, and uh, it will be the greatest shock for them, of course. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, actually it's over-fulfilled, because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would, would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization. So basically America is stuck with, with demoralization. And unless, even if, if you start right now, here, this minute, you start educating new generation of Americans, it will still take you 15 to 20 years to turn the tide of, uh, of ideological perception of reality uh, back to normal, no, normalcy and, and uh, patriotism. The next stage is destabilization. This time, subverter does not care about your ideas and the patterns of your consumption. Whether you eat junk food and get fat and flab, it doesn't matter anymore. This time, and it takes only from two to five years to destabilize a nation, uh, it's, uh, what, what matters is essentials. Economy, foreign relations, defense systems. Uh, and you can see it quite clearly that in some areas, uh, in such sensitive areas as, as uh, defense and economy. Uh, the uh, influence of Marxist-Leninist ideas in the United States is absolutely fantastic. I, I could never believe it 14 years ago when I landed uh, in this part of the world that the process will go that fast. Uh, the next stage, of course, is crisis. It, it, it may take only up to six weeks to, to bring a country to the verge of crisis. You can see it in, in Central America now. And after crisis, with a violent change of, of power, structure, and economy, you have so-called the period of normalization. It may last indefinitely. Normalization is a cynical expression borrowed from Soviet propaganda. When the Soviet tanks moved into Czechoslovakia in 68, Comrade Brezhnev said, now the situation in brotherly Czechoslovakia is normalized. This is what will happen in the United States if you allow all these schmucks to bring the country to crisis to promise people all kind of goodies and the paradise on earth, uh, to, to destabilize your uh, economy, to eliminate the principle of free market competition, and to put a big brother government in Washington, D.C., with uh, benevolent dictators like Walter Mondale, who will promise lots of things, never mind whether the promises are fulfillable or not. He will go to Moscow to kiss the bottoms of, of new generation of Soviet assassins. Never mind, he will create false illusions that the uh, situation is under control. Situation is not under control. Situation is disgustingly out of control. Most of the American politicians, media and educational system trains another generation of people who think they are living at a peacetime. False. The United States is in the state of war. Undeclared total war against the basic principles and the foundations of, of this system. And, and the initiator of this war is not Comrade Andropov, of course. Uh, it's, it's the system, however ridiculous it may sound, the world communist system or the world communist conspiracy. Whether I scare some people or not, I don't give a hoot. Uh, if, if you are not scared by now, nothing can scare you. But you don't have to be paranoid about it. What, what actually happens now, that unlike myself, you have literally several years to live on unless the United States wake up. The, the time bomb is ticking with every second. 
the disaster is coming closer and closer. Unlike myself, you will have nowhere to defect to. Unless you want to live in Antarctica with penguins. This is it. This is the last country of freedom and, and possibility. Okay, so what do we do? What is your recommendation to the American people? Well, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the immediate thing that comes to my mind is, of course, there must be a very strong national effort to educate people in, in, in the spirit of real patriotism, number one. Number two, to, to explain them the real danger of socialist, communist, whatever, welfare state, big brother government. If people will fail to grasp the impending danger of that development, nothing ever can help the United States. You may kiss goodbye to your freedom, including freedoms to, to homosexuals, to uh, prison inmates. All this freedom will vanish, evaporate in, in five seconds, including your precious lives. Um, the second thing, I, the moment at least part of the United States population is convinced that the danger is real. They have to force their government. And I'm not talking about sending letters, signing petitions, and all this beautiful, noble activity. I'm talking about forcing United States government to stop aiding communism. Because there is no other problem more burning and, and urgent than to stop the Soviet military-industrial complex from destroying what is, whatever is left of the free world. And it is very easy to do. No credits. No technology, no money, no political or diplomatic recognition, and of course no such idiocy as grain deals to USSR. The Soviet people, 270 millions of, of Soviets, will be eternally thankful to you if you stop aiding a bunch of murderers who sit now in Kremlin and whom President Reagan respectfully calls government. They do not govern anything, least of all such complexity as the Soviet economy. So basic. Two, two very simple, maybe two simplistic answers or solutions, but never, nevertheless, they are the only solutions. Educate yourself, understand what's going on around you. You are not living at the time of peace. You are in a state of war, and you have precious little time to save yourself. Um, you don't have much time, especially if you are talking about young generation. There's not much time left for convulsions. Uh, uh, to the beautiful uh, disco music. Very soon it will go, just, just overnight. If we are talking about capitalists or, or, or wealthy businessmen, they, I think they are selling the rope on which they will hang very soon. If they don't stop, if they cannot curb their unsettled desire for profit, and if they keep on trading with the monster of the Soviet communism, they are going to hang very soon. And it, they will pray to be killed, but unfortunately they will be sent to Alaska probably to manage industry of slaves. It's, it's simplistic. I know it sounds unpleasant. I know Americans don't like to listen to things which are unpleasant. But I have defected not to tell you the stories about such idiocies as, as microfilm, James Bond type, espionage. This is garbage. Uh, you don't need any espionage anymore. I have come to talk about survival. It's a question of survival of this system. And you may ask me, what is it in for me? Survival, obviously. Because unlike, I, as I said, I am now in your boat. If, if we sing together, we'll sing beautifully together. There is no other place on this planet to defect to.